Hello, strangers out there. Uh, let me bump this up a bit. Okay, there we go. Um, uh, hope everybody can hear me. Um, I've got a, another video day today. Uh, I've got another in the series of the I Remembers. Um, so today is a special day, and I'll get into why in a little bit. Um, the first thing uh, I want to do is discuss the subject of the I Remember. Uh, today's I Remember is going to be about November 18th, um, 1992. So, on um, Wednesday, uh, November 18th, 1992, just a little past midnight, so from the 17th into the 18th, um, I had been playing a video game on my, on the PC, uh, that we had at home. Um, and, uh, I decided, uh, I'm, I'm reading this, um, uh, so just so I can keep this in mind, I've already, uh, posted this onto my, uh, uh, my WordPress, uh, thing, so getting back into it. Um, I had, uh, decided that night um it was a little past midnight i uh, had enough um shut off the game and uh turn off the computer and was heading for bed um uh 92 i was in college at the time i was in my second year of college and i had classes later in the day uh so yeah you know being a night owl that i am um i could afford to indulge in my night owlness and sleep in and get enough sleep still for my classes later on in the day. Um, so as I got up from the desk uh, to head to my room, I peeked into the living room and saw my dad, uh, Mel Strange, uh, lying on the couch, still awake and reading. Uh, so I waved to him goodnight and headed for bed, not knowing that it would be the last time I would see him alive. Um, my dad had been sick with a cold the week before, and still really didn't feel as if he'd fully recovered from that um, by that time, by the time that evening had rolled around. Um, and so by the time I went to bed, he was already feeling um, heaviness in his chest, having a bit of trouble breathing, and felt as if his cold from earlier had not only come back, but was getting worse and maybe turning into full-blown pneumonia. So, um, somewhere around 1 or 2 o'clock that, that morning, a few hours later, he was still awake, pretty much convinced himself that he had pneumonia. And by 2 o'clock, he had woken my mother up, and he wanted her to take him to the hospital right then, um, because he could kind of feel himself getting worse. And obviously, pneumonia, he knew then, as everybody should know, pneumonia is not, some, uh, not something to laugh at. It's something to take you very seriously. Um, but in the course of doing that, he and my mother um, both made two very important mistakes. Um, now, my dad was a veteran uh, from both the Navy and the Army. Um, combined service in both um, totaled out to about 30 years by the time he retired. Uh, and there was more to that story that I'll get to in other videos. Um... But uh, most of the time that he was, um, and he was in the reserves for most of that 30-year uh, span, um, there were a few active years. Um, while he was active in the Army, uh, about 27 years in, uh, Dad was injured uh, while on duty. Uh, again, subject for another video. Uh, gust of wind had blown him off the top of the radar unit he was working on. Effectively broke his back. Um... He spent the next 10 years in constant pain, um, going from not being able to move 
pretty much at all to going to a wheelchair, walking with a cane, eventually, you know, walking under his own power, but with a, a, a very constant uh, telltale limp. Um, and uh, then as now, the VA was no help. Um, and the Army Health Insurance, uh, known as Champus, uh, at least at that time, was chronically late in paying hospital bills. Uh, my mother was a teacher um, working at the Pine, Pinecrest School System at their elementary school in Northridge. Um, it's a pirate, private school, and they had Kaiser insurance. So my parents decided that for a case of pneumonia like this, it'd be better to have Kaiser cover the bill rather than Champus. So we lived in Simi Valley at the time. And there aren't any Kaiser hospitals, actual hospitals, uh, in Simi Valley. There weren't then, there still aren't now. There's a couple clinics, but yeah, obviously there's nothing going to be open in the middle of the night. So the only hospital in Simi that they could have gone to uh, was the Simi Hospital, then known as the Adventist Hospital, uh, which was about 15, 20 minutes tops uh, away from where we lived. And, uh, obviously, you know, depending on the various routes you could take to get there. Um, but my parents were concerned that if they went to the Adventist Hospital, then they'd automatically send the bill to Champus. And being how chronically late Champus was, they didn't want to deal with that. So, rather than deal with that, they went to the Kaiser Hospital over the hill in the San Fernando Valley... Um, in the suburb of Woodland Hills, which is in the very southwest corner of the San Fernando Valley. Um, and uh, even in the middle of the night, with no traffic, uh, on what would otherwise be very busy streets, um, the trip would take at least 30 minutes. So, but, you know, think it's just pneumonia, they'll be fine. Got plenty of time to get there. Um, 30 minutes would be plenty of time. So, um, now the first mistake that they made, and this is mainly my dad, was not realizing that, well, actually, this is a, let me, let me go back, back up here. Um, first mistake was actually not realizing that being covered under Kaiser, um, and having a Kaiser card, medical card, they could have walked into any hospital, anywhere, anytime. Uh, including, obviously, the Simi Adventist, and shown that card and had Kaiser pick up the insurance bill, uh, rather than Champus. They didn't know this. They didn't, never read the back of the card that said this. Um, had they known this and acted on it, it would have, you know, they could have just gone to Simi Adventist and taken half the time to get to the hospital, and, uh, it, rather than going over to Woodland Hills. And certain things may have been a little different in the outcome. Um, because the second mistake that they made was that he disno misdiagnosed um, what his actual problem was. Um, his left arm had been going numb for a while. Um, and um, and he'd gone numb again later on that night. Uh, he was feeling a bit shoulder breath. Um, he was feeling a uh, weight on his chest. Um, the way Mom described it, he said that he had, like, it was like an elephant sitting on his chest. Um, you know, Dad wasn't in the best of health. Yeah, he gained a lot of weight. Yeah, he didn't really exercise that much. The the, the back pain from the injury um, kind of prevented him from, from exercising, or at least he used it as an excuse not to exercise all that much. So... That um, he he smoked a lot, um, at least half a pack or more a day. Um, didn't really drink. Um, you know, the alcohol has kind of affected his stomach, so um, he didn't drink much. Uh, and very little, very you know, very seldom. Usually social events and things like that. So there wasn't really much there. But he you know he also ate, he ate a lot of fatty foods. You know, a lot of the stuff that you're just not supposed to do. And he gained a lot of weight. Um, he was at least 200, 220, like that. So, just really not in the best of health. And what he thought was the onset of pneumonia coming off of a cold 
was actually the beginnings of what would turn out to be a massive heart attack. And, but, um, uh, neither he nor mom really considered that possibility. You know, they, the, 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 the symptoms didn't register in their minds. They just went on the supposition that it was pneumonia. And therefore, the decision to take their time and head up and over the hill to Woodland Hills, rather than directly to the Simi Hospital. So, they didn't bother to wake myself or my younger brother. Uh, you know, not knowing the danger and just figuring that, you know, at least one or both of them would be, you know, they go to the hospital and one or both of them would be back home by the time we woke up and, you know, were, you know, getting ready to go to school. Um... You know, I mean, I was in I was in college. My brother was in high school, so you know, we could have very easily gotten up and gotten ready ourselves, ready and gone. You know, without, you know, without any either of them being there. Um, but you know, I suppose you know it was late enough at night they'd go to the hospital, figure out what was wrong, and at least mom would probably be back home by the time we got up and had to get going. So she could send us off. So anyway, off they went. So, and onto the freeway that connects Simi Valley into the, the San Fernando Valley is up and over a hill. Off the freeway to Panga Canyon and then south down through, you know, the valley. Uh, from the north end down to the south end. Um, and it was, you know, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, there was no, almost no traffic hardly any cars, um, anywhere, um, there are an endless number of lights, uh, along the way, though, and it seemed, uh, the mom was getting stopped by pretty much everyone, and she can tell the dad was getting steadily worse, um, and he could too, apparently, uh, about halfway through the valley, still a good, ooh, ten minutes or so away, from the hospital, Dad realized uh, that, you know, he was in a lot more danger than he thought. And he said to my mom, I think you need to drive a bit faster. Uh, mom tried, but she wasn't much of a fast driver to begin with. And she got, again, stopped by every light along the way. So, by the time she finally pulled him to the hospital's parking lot, Dad was, un Dad was unconscious. Um, she ran into the hospital to get help, uh, and two men inside, uh, nurses, orderlies, whatever, uh, came out to help her, and by that time, Dad was already gone. So, I'd say right about 4 o'clock that morning, um, my brother Jim and myself were woken by Mom's friend Pauline Rush, and she simply told us, Mom had taken Dad to the hospital out in Woodland Hills, <clears throat> and that we were, she was there to pick us up and take her out to join her there. So, Jim and I both got dressed quickly, and Pauline drove us over the hill along the same 30-minute route um, to, to get to the hospital. Uh, when we got there, we encountered not only our mother, uh, who was beside herself with grief, um, but, uh, her other friends, Bud Pews, Larry Sanders, Susie Hansen, and her husband, Dave Hansen. Um, and it took quite some time for somebody to finally tell us that Dad was no longer with us. Um, I eventually got the story that I just am now relating to you guys, uh, from my mother. And uh, I realized almost immediately that Mom and Dad had made those two fatal mistakes. Um, all the signs of the heart attack were there. And they, they just didn't think of it. And it immediately, you know, it immediately hit me. That's a heart attack. Um, and I also showed her the back of the Kaiser card where it states that you can go to any hospital, show them the card, and Kaiser will pick up the tab. 
Um, they they could have easily and should have gone to see me at Venice, and you know, Kaiser would have picked it up, and you know, it was closer, um, and that time that it would have taken to get there would have, might have made all the difference. Yeah, it was a massive heart attack. Maybe Dad still would have died. Who knows? You know, we'll never really know, unfortunately, because, you know, you know, circumstances weren't that way. Uh, more timely arrival might have been enough to save him, or it might not have, you know, there's no way to know. Um, and, of course, in hindsight, and almost immediately after I pointed that out, I, I realized that I probably shouldn't have been, uh, have pointed that out uh, to Mom, as I think she blamed herself for dad's death from that point on. Uh, I think she she felt guilty that she didn't think of it, she didn't know about the what was on the card, and I guess she feared that myself and my brother uh, would kind of blame her for that. Um, and, you know, in a way, I suppose I do. I did, then I kind of still do. Um... But, you know, I blame Dad, too. It was it was a mistake made by both of them. And, you know, they they should have known better. You know, they shouldn't have needed a 19-year-old kid to tell them that, you know, they were making mistakes here, I you know. Um, but, um, you know, I realized that and you know I tried not to bring it up again around her because you know again I instantly realized the damage I'd, I'd caused for pointing those kind of things out to her you know bad enough she loses her husband but to, to realize that, that you know it could have been prevented if they'd just done things differently I think made the pain a little bit more uh, a little bit worse for her um, but uh, after about an hour or so at the hospital, um, after everything had been arranged, you know, needed to be arranged, by that point, we met, went back home. Um, and it was probably about 5, a little after 5 o'clock in the morning. Um, I took it upon myself to call um, at least one of Dad's sisters uh, back east. And uh, to this day, I can still hear my Aunt Arlene uh, wail. Uh, as I told her the news. Um, I don't recall calling too many other people besides that. Um, that morning, I, I suppose I, 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 I don't know. It's not my memory. I, I recall calling Arlene and hearing her cry. Um, but I'm, I think I might have left it to Arlene to call the rest of the family about it. Um, I called my girlfriend, who's, you know, now my wife, um, but uh and let her let her know what happened and to relay the message to the teachers that we had in common at at, at the college it was our last it was our, our last semester there really um but you know let them know that I would not be in for the rest of the week uh and the reason why uh, and I'm pretty sure somebody uh, somebody must have called the high school for my brother I, I don't think it was me I'm not too sure who did it but uh, same thing, you know, let them know Jim wouldn't be in for the rest of the week. Um, so, and then the rest of that day, we were just inundated with, with phone calls from family back east, uh, friends um, from all over the place. Uh, a lot of, you know, a lot of people came by. You know, I fielded a lot of calls at first. Um, you know, again, like I said, several friends came over. Um, and a lot of family back east were already starting to make arrangements to fly out as soon as they could. Uh, and, you know, basically the next week or so we're going to be very busy. Um, and we didn't, we knew uh, that our lives had profoundly changed, but I don't think any of us really understood just how profoundly. Uh, I certainly didn't. From, uh, losing a father, I would uh, we lost a little bit more. Um, I got my music background, you know, and <laughs> around this time I fancied myself a musician. I wanted to be, you know, wanted to, you know, get a band and, you know, be a rock star and the whole thing. And, um, 
you know, that was the direction I wanted to go. I had, you know, I'd been around music all my life. I'd been, you know, my 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 dad was a musician. He he played the guitar. Uh, he played the organ. You know, he played 30s and 40s big band. You know, uh, Glenn Miller and and such um, on on the organ, and then he'd switch over to his uh, Fender Strat and play, you know, 50s and early 60s rock and roll on that. You know, a lot of Elvis. Um, but, you know, so I gotten a lot of my music background from him. I started, I learned how to read music. I played a little bit of piano and keyboard and stuff. Um, now, yeah, um, history tells us February 3rd, 1959, uh, which is the date that Buddy Holly, Richie Valens, and the Big Bopper died in their plane crash. Uh, that's been immortalized in both print and song as the day the music died. But for me, that date will always be November 18th, 1992. You know, with Dad gone, all the music in that house was gone. You know, he 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 played the organ, he played the guitar, he'd sang. You know, and you know, and he was mainly the the main source of entertainment at any party we went to, and we went to a lot of them as often as he could. He he loved to entertain people. You know, either a party or you know, um, he, my dad was the charter organist for the Me Alex Lodge. You know, and, you know, pretty much every Friday and even, you know, weekends, they'd have, you know, some kind of a dinner or some function or whatever. And Dad, in addition to his duties as an organist for the various meetings and stuff like that, he just, you know, he'd go and play the organ just to entertain the people that were sitting in there eating. And, uh, and occasionally I'd, I'd take my keyboard and play along alongside, but, you know, he loved doing that. And, uh, you know, all of that stopped. You know, as much as, uh, as much as I wanted to be a musician and wanted to be that, you know, rock star and everything like that, I, you know, I learned what I could about music. I was in the music program at college, you know, learned how to read music, was writing music. I was in the theory program in college and everything like that, but I could never match dad's ability to perform. And, um, you know, I was better than dad in, in many ways because of my ability to write music, read music. Um, I could, I had a better voice than he did, but I couldn't, you know, I could play by ear just the same as he did, but I could also read the music and, and play what, you know, not well, not fast, but, you know, not, I couldn't really quite sight read it, but I could, you know, I could read the music and plunk it out and, and then get, get it in my ear and play and get to the point where I could play it faster, but I could never really match my dad and his, his ability to perform. And so, you know, and dad had a bigger repertoire of songs. I'd written like about 30 songs of varying quality, 30 songs of about, you know, varying quality there. Um, but I pretty much, that was the limit of my ability to play. I could only really play the songs that I had written, that only, that I had written. I couldn't really play a whole lot more of that. Dad had a huge, you know, huge library in his head of stuff that he could pull from and, and play, either on the organ or on the, or on the guitar. So, and of course, you know, he played to his generation. Um, you know, that, that silent generation, next greatest generation, baby boomer, you know, crossover into the baby boomer, um, era, you know, and, um, uh, I couldn't, I, I never learned those songs to the same degree, um, so, all that stopped, the Elks lost an organist, and I'm not too sure if they ever replaced them. Um, the parties became a lot fewer, farther in between, and quiet. You know, when there was never the music. I could never, you know, I never learned to play as well as Dad did. 
I never learned all of the songs that he knew. Um, I couldn't play the organ. I couldn't play the guitar. Tries I might. Um, my piano keyboarding skills were decent, but not great. And again, only pretty much. I was only really good with the, the songs that I had written. So I couldn't really take up his mantle and just carry on. As I'm sure a lot of people had hoped that I would step into his shoes. Join the Elks, become the organist, and, and carry on um, in his place. But, you know, and maybe if I had been as good a performer as he was, that might have happened. But, you know, or at least I would have considered it. But, you know, I wasn't. And so it didn't happen. And, you know, and I, I couldn't even perform, I couldn't find any uh, anybody to play, you know, my keyboarding skills were, were minimal to begin with, I couldn't find anybody else to play with me, so I couldn't even, you know, get a band and perform in a different capacity um, in that regard, so, you know, so there I was, I, and I really wasn't able to write any other, any more songs after that. Um, all the high school lengths that I had had that fueled my writing up to that point was pretty much gone because I, you know, I was in a pretty decent relationship again. You know, I was had a girlfriend and which whom I later married, so all of that <laughs> lovesick angst was gone. Um, and the musical the musical muse just pretty much died with my dad. Um, so anyway. Um, you know, um, that's pretty much it. My father, uh, Melvin Richard Strange, died of a heart attack on the morning of November 18th, 1992. He and my mother, Kathy, were both 54. I was 19, about six weeks away from 20, and uh, my brother Jim uh, was 15. So, it had a profound change on us. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, um, today is special. Um, the reason why is because March 26th is my dad's birthday. Uh, he would have been 77 this year. So. So that is it for today. And, uh, I hope everybody well and, uh, stay strange. Thanks for watching my video. If you like what you just watched, don't forget to give me a thumbs up below. For more of my videos, click the subscribe button on the screen or down in the description below. If you'd like to support me in what I do, I have books that you can read. The links are in the description below. If you want to support in other ways, you can go to my Patreon page and help me out there. You can also follow me on various social media pages. The links to all of those are also below. Thank you again. Stay strange.